Good morning, everyone. Aishima and I have been working together for almost seven years now. And when we were urban farmers in high school, we never thought that we would be here today. We never imagined that the food justice movement would be so diverse and alive. We never imagined it would be so vast. Through our years of farming, organizing, teaching, and learning, it has become so evident that all oppression is connected. That is why we have such beautiful and diverse energy with us here today, and we would like to thank all of you for your work. But why are we all here? What drives us, despite all that makes us different, to be here? That's the thing about food. Food is immeasurably powerful because while it is so personal, it is also universal. We can all think of a dish that smells like a feeling. We can all think of a treat that cradles us. We can all think of the energy and story behind flavor. And even though this looks different for everyone, we all share the story that transcends sight and sound, the story that is food. And that is why when we are looking at the food justice movement, we aren't just talking about 8 million different ways to prepare kale or telling people how to be healthy. We're looking at communities healing themselves. We are looking at people reconnecting with energy that was hidden away from them in time. We are looking at reclaiming the cradle of civilization. The reason we explore art, science, and even ourselves is because we have food stability. Without food, we would still be in survival mode, always on the hunt. But why do we see people in survival mode today? We have seen people on the hunt for money, hope, understanding, love, justice, and more. Because for them, the story food tells is one of awkward pauses and accusatory glances. Food says to them, you don't have the privilege to find funky kale recipes. You, you need to survive. I am not a game. You need to survive. Your mother worked hard for me. You need to survive. You need to clean this plate. And as the food awkwardly settles in their stomachs, they don't get to think about which BuzzFeed-inspired recipe they would have preferred. It has been decided for them systemically. Food justice is not just the individual's responsibility. This is not only about telling people why they should not eat that. This is not only about telling people why they should eat this instead. It is not about telling people that they have the power to change because for some people that is not liberation. For some people, pulling yourself up by the bootstraps is a myth. Food justice is also about systemic responsibility, looking at why things are the way they are and holding the system accountable to create deep, sustainable change that does not assume an individual can eat this or can eat that. <laughs> now it's time for us to reshape or innate thought into what do we need to get done? As an individual, we have our own identities. However, we all come together to cultivate a community. Thus, individual responsibility only leaves room for a certain number of people to be a part of the conversation, whether, it's on, whether it is on LGBTQT rights, agriculture sustainability, or systemic change. Conversations are essential to our foundation of a movement. Therefore, it cannot be held only by an individual. It is important to have diversified atmosphere where everyone feels equally represented by providing a community with an environment in which they are being included and not the illusion of feeling included. Yes, we need the individual. Yes, we need the individual to challenge the system. However, individual cannot do it by himself or herself. Therefore, the notion that it all depends on you should be dropped. It is very important as the advocators of food justice to identify the issues of a community and properly assess its residents. As a body, we need to be mindful of imposing our cultures and communities that are facing food insecurities, food deserts, and gentrification. We need to formally educate our neighbors on the awareness of the importance of food in our communities. We are reclaiming our land, we are reinventing our, our, our recipes, we are educating our youth. We are the movement that has been rooted for years and has been disturbed continuously. However, our ability to adapt to changing ties is phenomenal. Historically, we have seen institutions put in place to uplift black and brown communities. We have also watched it watch as they crumbled, joyfully locked away, hidden from our eyes, only its remnants left behind. Only stories and telltales, what do we have left? 
Mother Earth provides us with a fertile soil, seasonal rotations, and an abundance of light. Our sole responsibility is to feed our youth the fruits in which she bears and to educate them on the need to embrace their culture, educate them on their history, embrace their leadership for our ancestors has laid the seed in which they need to be watered. They will germinate. Understanding individual responsibilities and holding the system accountable is a conversation that we need to have to redevelop and eradicate racism and oppression. The system only works if we, the people, turn the gear. To my peers, all the youth that are here, um, I want you all to find your passion and set your own goals. Never give up or allow for a rock to become a mountain. Keep being a farmer. Keep being the activist. Keep being the great public speaker you are. Keep being an educator. Keep learning. Keep motivating and keep the food justice movement alive and true to the people. Thank you.